to... E, good morning, everybody. Again, thank you very much. Uh, we have the, a great pleasure to receive you, Professor Jasper Patak, from uh, is a Fulbright specialist. And today he's talking to, uh, uh, to us about uh, uh, mental health, and he's connecting his talk with the, with the topic that Professor Juan Carlos Arias uh, talks about in, in, in his uh, last uh, lecture and talk. So thank you very much. It's our pleasure to have you here, and please yeah, so, uh, the stage is to us. Thank you, Professor Cider, and buenas días. My nombre es Juan Pata. I'll talk about my Spanish when my slides come. Uh, it is incredible to be here, and then it is very scary to talk after Professor Juan Carlos. <laughs> he had absolutely an audio-visual presentation on his eyes and ears and hands and legs, and I don't know how many brain cells were working simultaneously. <laughs> so it was a beautiful presentation. I enjoyed thoroughly. When I entered in, he was talking about optics. So I thought if he would have been my professor for physics, I would have been PhD in physics. <laughs> but then gradually he moved to different topics and finally ended into antibiotic resistance. And I said I did not miss the boat because I am a pharmacist. <laughs> I did a lot of work in the anti-malarial and infectious diseases and it was a great idea. So you all must be wondering, why the hell I am here? <laughs> because it is a forum for physics, correct? Yeah. And why this mental problems of students to be discussed in a physics forum? But the reason is very simple. I am coming here as a Fulbright specialist. I am here for one month. And unless I give one talk every day, Professor Caesar doesn't allow my hotel to feed me. <laughs> Make sense? Yes. So, unless I give talk every day in the morning here, the hotel says, no food. <laughs> so, in spite of the physics forum, I am going to talk about <laughs> mental challenges, what college students face. And it is very interesting because a lot of these mental challenges are partially covered by Professor John Carlos because he was talking about the bacteria and how the resistance happens. And these mental problems also are to some extent related with what type of bacteria you have inside the stomach or inside your GI tract and that is called microbiota. So kindly be I am extremely thankful to you and kindly be patient because if you leave the classroom, I will lose my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I'm a Columbia Ila Gente de Acme. I love Columbia. You know. And the beautiful people here, you know, everybody, if I walk, I stay very close to Porferias and my best time I spend is just sit in front of the Corferia and watch the beautiful people. Absolutely great people. And believe it or not, I was talking to Professor Caesar and I said that I, I love, I will love to be the citizen of Colombia. And he was honest enough to tell me you are not adequately handsome enough to be a citizen of Colombia. <laughs> so my name is Eshwan Pata. Actually, I'm from the United States. Uh, oh, that I already said that. Next one, please. I'm uh, Professor and I'm associated the University of Florida, Canada College of Pharmacy. I'm in Colombia as a Fulbright Specialist. And uh, my sincere thank to University of Hospital Francisco Jose de Caldas. I don't know why it is so long name, but then I found out <laughs> that every Colombian girl has at least four names, <laughs> and the boy has ten names. <laughs> because I was very proud to be from India. We have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, R, V, K, Prasad. That was the name of one person. 
but Colombians have beaten us. <laughs> so my sincere thanks to Rector and Dean and other administrative heads supporting my trip here. Sincere thanks to Fulbright Specialist Commission of Colombia. And I will fail if I don't mention my sincere gratitude to most handsome professor, <laughs> Sister Aurelio Herrano Piero, <laughs> being my host and incredible support for making my stay here happy here. Please next slide. And a special thanks to world learning people, Abdio Loho, Shannon, Sergio Vilami Sanchez, and Sebastian Vilami Zar from Colombian Feedback Commission. Uh, Professor Luis H. Reyes and Juan C. Cruz. I hope you remember these names. <laughs> they are from your university. It's a coincidence that I was communicating with the, uh, these two professors from university. Unions. They yeah. lost Andes. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are editing a book together on nanotechnology, nanocarrier for proteins and peptides. Uh, so I am very, uh, very happy that I landed in Colombia and then we signed the contract. So obviously, <laughs> uh, it's a good coincidence that it may allow me to come back again and sit in front of the corporate. Uh, special <laughs> thanks to Professor Alexis R.P. from the International Office of UDA, BDC, our Waskid, and all my friends who are here, uh, Professor Billy Moran, who was produced, Fernando Cruz Quiroga, who is the uh, MD, PhD, and they all supported, that's why I'm here. Everybody from United States scared me. <laughs> <laughs> they said that you are a U.S. passport holder. <laughs> they may take you away and then they will ask money from the U.S. government. <laughs> it happened. I have still one more day to go. Now, so they say El Fondo de Mi Corazón, sincere thanks from the bottom of my heart. Next slide, please. And apologies for my Spanish pronunciation. But if you understand my Spanish, then surely you will understand my English also. <laughs> this, this, this will pass for me as the all. So my sincere apologies if I do something wrong here. So uh, what we are going to talk is, it's very interesting. You know, the world is changing. And from generation to generation, the things are changing. And now, uh, there is a beautiful saying in Africa, we say that one who loves you, warns you, like your parents. They love you. That's why they tell you, oh, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. But in the new generation, the challenge is they don't want to listen to their parents. They don't want to listen to their professors. Or lot of, they, they think that they are independent, individualistic, and all those things. But it, it leads to a lot of challenges in life, and that is what we are going to talk about this. So they say that one in four students have a diagnosable illness, and 40% of the students don't seek the help. Even though they have the illness, they understand I am missing something, I have some problem with me, but they don't seek help, because they don't want to talk about it. You know, they, if, if you have a problem, you don't want to tell anybody that I have a problem, because it doesn't look nice. And that's where the challenge comes to this year, and 80% feel overwhelmed by the responsibilities and 50% have become so anxious that they struggle in the school. So I was sitting there and then I was watching all the wires here and I <laughs> thought I'm going to stand here and give a talk. <laughs> so I was very anxious. I was scared. <laughs> I was very anxious about, oh, 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 wait. And I was really scared. So 50% of those people are anxious in the school. You know, they come from the high school. And especially those who from, come from the villages, you know, like Mira Flores, I went there. <laughs> and the people were very happy there. No stress. But as soon as you come in Bogota, your stress starts with the traffic. <laughs> and then, you know, in normally Mira Flores, in 10 minutes, we'll walk, pet, 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 go up. And I was riding behind a motorbike. And that guy brought me from all the hills like that. And I thought, I have to hold his shoulder. Otherwise, I will be down there and he will be running. <laughs> So this is the stress. The stress here is different, and that's where the challenges come into the picture. So we find that whether you want it or not, but at some point in our life, during college days, we suffer from some of these problems. Either depression or anxiety, suicide attitude, quite a big thing in many countries now, eating disorder and addiction. Now there is a beautiful statement 
which are done by Nelson Mandela, Nobel Prize winner as well as the South African leader, no more now. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. But when you are in college, most of the students think that do I wish to change the world or be the victim of my mental disorder? And this is what happens into the system and that is where we need to work on uh, how to deal with these some of the things and these are temporary things and I will explain you why my title was different. So uh, you will find that no one wishes to have a dark day and sleepless nights. Grumpy morning and this endless dark tunnel with no sign that it ever ends and depression is not a choice. You have an option. Whether you want to be a depressed college student or you want to be a professor like Johan Carlo, making even all this optic physics very lively, very energetic. You know, he, I, I was wondering, you know, when I, I was learning my physics and all these things they were teaching me, I never laughed in the class. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Somehow I would have been your student, I would have loved that. Mm. And so symptoms of the depression, depression, differ from person to person. So if four persons are there, they are suffering from depression, they will all exhibit different symptoms. It is very difficult to generalize that a person is under depression because then everybody expresses in different ways because it all depends upon your background, how you have been brought up from childhood, how you are trained to face the challenges. You know, in many cases, uh, I was meeting Professor Caesar's son and he was a bike rider and he was saying that he is riding his bike almost like 100 miles in 6 hours and all those things. I ride my bike 3 miles an hour <laughs> and I was becoming depressed. <laughs> I said I should not be with his son. <laughs> so this is how it happens in college also. When you come to a class, you have 100 people and all the 100 people are not same. They are intellectually different, they are emotionally different. They are socially different. And that is where you start suffering from depression. You think, oh my God, why I cannot talk like Carlos Johan? He's such a wonderful <laughs> That's it. Now I go down like this. <laughs> and this is where the problem comes. I really, yes, I enjoyed your talk. I'm telling you, you should be conducting workshop for our faculty in America. <laughs> We need that. <laughs> <laughs> so, ultimately, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, depression is a result of a chemical imbalance in your brain. You know, you when you start thinking that you cannot make it, and this is where you start creating problems in your serotonin and all sorts of things which are happening in your brain. Dopamine, serotonin are two things which really make imbalance. And if that imbalance is there, it doesn't happen overnight. It happens over the period of time. And you will find that in certain cases, there are several students. And those who are students, please uh, don't shake your head. So this <laughs> is the fact of your life, that as soon as your exams are coming closer, you start having stomach ache, you start having headache, you think imbalance something, and the exams, and if the professor is really hard, tough in examination, that even worse. It creates more problem for you rather than the uh, thing. So the way a person displays signs of depression is not necessarily the same way symptoms emerge in others. And similarities you offer about how each person reacts and behaves determined by the how they handle the changes. You know, every day we are changing. We believe it or not, as uh, Professor Carlos has shown, that the bacteria change. They they get resistant to the antibiotics. We also have to adapt to the scenario and get resistant to the changes in life. If we can do that, we have never depression. If we cannot do that, we become the victim and education doesn't help us. We are here to change the world, but we ourselves change and go down the line of depression. And that's why you need to, their susceptibility, susceptibility to depression moves over the period of time and they become more and more susceptible unless they strong, they make their mind strong. And this is where the game of mind comes into the picture, but your body reflects 
and body responded to the pressure from outside. Your body is trained or it responses the pressure to outside. It's like very simple. You guys ride the motorbike, correct? If you do not have helmet and you don't have glasses, then the insect will go in your eyes and your eyes start tearing out. A lot of tears come out because that your body responds. That is called immunogenic responses. For everything, your body has a system to respond back. And this is where if you continue in the line of depression, your body will take you towards depression. If you continue in the line of, no, I am not going to be that route, your body will help you to go this route. So this is where you have to understand the uh, challenges which we have. And uh, you know what happens is, there, a, a time comes in everybody's life. It, it has come to me, it has come to all of you, and it will be happening, that every thought is a battle. You feel that, oh my god, this is another battle I have to fight. Every breath is a war, and I don't think I'm going to win anymore. Now, this is the challenge. You know, when you come into the college, you think that I should win. But do you really want to win it? That's one question. And is it you are here just for winning, or you are here to learn? You are here to acquire knowledge. You are here to acquire wisdom. Now, winning is getting first grade, or first class first in the class. That is winning. But learning is, even if you have B grade or C grade, but if you understand what you are learning, you will be more successful in your life. So your grades and your mark sheets stop as soon as you get your degree, you graduate. And once you go out of the university, those numbers have no value. The value is how you communicate what you learned with the people. Like I am in pharmacy, correct? I am a pharmacy professor. So in, I always tell my student that, you know, don't worry about whether you remember all the 200 drugs or not. You should be able to communicate with your patient in a right way to build a confidence in the minds of the patient that you are a great pharmacist. This doesn't need high degree. This doesn't need great grade. It needs your mindset. And this is where the colleges should build up the mindset so that the students will not give more importance to the grade but to give more importance to the knowledge and more important to the practical aspect of your knowledge, then you will be able to be a successful person in life. And that is where you won't face any mental problems there. So, and we need no more, I am winning. That, is, that feeling, once it comes, then you are moving towards the depression. So normally there is a physical well-being symptom, changes in sleep habit, whether sleeping more or sleeping frequently, people start coming late, and difficulty sleeping, appetite changes, if you have a lot of appetite and overeating, emotional symptoms, sadness, feeling of being overwhelmed, feeling of hopelessness. You know, you feel like I'm hopeless. You know, all these kids are getting good grades, I'm hopeless. <laughs> Even though you are very good, but because you didn't get the grades at that particular point, you feel like you're hopeless. And that is not true. Every person has a great instinct to be a good person. Only thing is the people who trigger that instinct and make you a good person. And that is the job of a professor, to make sure to build the confidence in the student's mind that I can do it, I will make it, and I will be able to do it. And this type of confidence you can build it within the student's mind so they will not have any mental problem. And thinking symptoms, seeing a glass half empty and having trouble concentrating, paying attention, resulting in difficulty in reading and completing the work task. I had a master student, and I was his supervisor. So this fellow, I could watch him, that in due course of time, he stopped coming to the classes, never get up till 12 o'clock, and never sleep till 4 o'clock in the morning. How he will get up in the morning? If you sleep at 4 o'clock, you, you need to at least 6 hours, so you never be able to come to the class. And we were observing, it so happened that his father, he was from Azerbaijan, so his father came, because we, Communicated, I said, yeah, you see some sort of problem here with you. And he was reluctant to go to the counselor. And then the father came, and it is so interesting that I normally carry my lunch and I sit next to the lake. I love to eat outside. And the father started sitting next to me. And then we became friends. And then I, we had a lot of understanding over the period of time. Now that fellow is a direct 
sector of one lab, biotechnology lab in Azerbaijan, doing fantastic, but he can be married. And you know what satisfaction I have? He sends me an email saying that, Professor Parker, your patience made me a director now. Because I was very patient with him. I could have hit him up. I would have thrown him out. But I didn't. You know, I spent time with him. I spent time with his father. And that is what we have to have a understanding between the faculty and the students. If that happens, then these problems will not there. And that's why we need to make sure that faculty also understand that not all 100 students are same. Some students may need little extra help. Some students may be good. Some students are visual. Some students are not. So we have to take extra effort to make sure, because we are fake. You know, I always say, and uh, I told Professor Caesar also, you, have you heard the name Mahatma Gandhi? Mm -hmm. All of you, correct? So Mahatma Gandhi was a barrister by profession. Mm -hmm. And he would have made millions in his life. But he opted to be poor. And we call it, he has coined a term called voluntary poverty. So all the faculties, the moment they come into the university as a faculty, they opt to be poor. <laughs> they opt to be poor because it is a voluntary. When I took a faculty job, I took almost seventy, eighty thousand dollars pay cut because I had to come down if I want to. Yeah, I wanted to be happy. And then if your happiness is directly related with the student's success, you are a good faculty. If your happiness is not related with the student's success, there is a problem. There needs to be some modification into the system, and that is where the mental problem can be easily resolved. Please, next slide. So, how do you know you are, you are depressed? So this is how the students start sitting, covering his face, you know, having something, not talking to anybody, yeah. sitting aloof. And you must have seen people. Your classmates must be doing this. I'm very sure it happens. So I, what you have to ask, a question is, have you experienced extreme sadness or hopelessness? If you ask this question and if it is yeah, yes, then you need help. Go immediately for help so that your depression cannot affect you too much. Does your family have a history of depression? This is another thing. Normally, if the parents or grandparents have depression history, it automatically comes because you carry their genes. If your parents are intelligent, you are intelligent because you are carrying the same genes. If your parents are depressed, you are depressed because genes are same. Mm -hmm. If you have arthritis, your father had arthritis. Mm -hmm. Diabetes, same. Cancer nowadays it is considered to be genetic disease. So this is what can come from the genetics. So you have to know your family very well. Have you turned to heavy drinking or drug use to relieve feelings of hopelessness? That is another very good sign of smoking also. It's help. And have you experienced invasive thoughts of death or suicide? This is the dangerous scenario. That means if you are having at that level, it is immediately first thing is to discuss with people. Start discussing. It is not a problem. Depression is not a disease. Depression is only a mind, state, stage of mind. And that can be easily avoided. But if you do not talk to the people, if you do not have good friends to communicate with each other, and if you have those friends who care for you, you, you might be a victim of this depression. Please, next slide. So if you begin to notice signs and symptoms of depression in a friend, there are several steps you can take to get them help. And here are some of signs of depression. They are not enjoying activities they once loved. You know, you, you were a good biker, but then you look at the bike and I don't want to ride a bike. And that's how you start going away from what you enjoy. Once you start going away from what you enjoy, definitely that is a sign of depression. They no longer attend classes or social outings. They are experiencing extreme anger or sadness over a relationship in their life. And they react negatively or with apathy to most things. They often talk about death and suicide. This is where the things come into the picture. And depression is the most unpleasant. You know, depressed, you don't want to be depressed. You can be sad. Sad is a natural process. But depression is not a natural process. Depression is a disorder. And we need to recognize that depression is disorder. Sadness is natural. If suppose I lose my parents, I'm sad. That is natural reflection. 
But depression is not the uh, response to that, and that is where uh, we have to learn that. And then this is the last thing I will really point it out that that is going to be next point of this class. So second thing is anxiety. You know, a lot of people have anxiety, and that reflects in their behavior. It's very easy. You must have observed your friends, classmates, that they they exhibit anxiety in different ways. So an obsessive compulsive disorder is one thing, panic disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, and social anxiety disorder. You know, in America, it's very interesting, but in COVID, uh, after COVID, we are facing a big challenge with our students. One of the major challenge was that they were coming to study in our university, but their families were in New York or different parts of the United States. Something went wrong in the family. Death had happened. Death of grandparents or you know, one of the siblings. They could not go. And they, because they could not go, they were 24 by 7 thinking about the same thing. I could not see my granddad. He died. His body was packed in plastic. And you know, it was terrible, terrible trauma to many students. And few of our students could not take that trauma and committed suicide. It was so sad that they really committed suicide. And, uh, it was a very sad scenario. But this is where you start understanding the life. One thing in life which you can say certain is death. All other things, whether you become a professor, whether you become a dean, or a rector, or a janitor, not certain. We have seen many people who started with janitor, studied, took degrees, became dean of the college, same college. Because opportunities were given. But that is not certain for every janitor. Correct? It is not certain for every janitor. So what is certain in life is death. So accepting death for ourselves as well as our relatives and everybody around you is a mind training. It is a training to your mind that you have to accept it today or tomorrow this is going to happen and take it. Now you are taking the things in a different way. Then the paradigm shifts in the life and that is what we have to learn. So it is sad actually because uh, my anxiety keeps me from enjoying things which I should have enjoyed in this age. You know, I have seen uh, we have beautiful beaches near Tampa. And there are some people who will sit on the beach but doesn't even look at the water. They don't go in water. They are so depressed that they just don't want to be uh, looking at it. So these are the trauma and social anxiety disorder is another major thing when it comes to the uh, anxiety. Next slide, please. Oh, fantastic. So anxiety is one little tree in your forest. Step back and look at the whole forest. You know, anxiety is only one part of your life. But you have a huge life there. And it is like you have to look at it. Oh, it's OK. I can ignore it. And that's how you learn how to deal with it. So some of the symptoms of anxiety disorders are feeling of stress, apprehension, irritability, trouble concentrating, fearfulness, sweating, dizziness, shortness of breath. I don't think in district all shortness of breath is anxiety. Because you climb those <laughs> steps. <laughs> so you, I climbed the stage because I could not convince the taxi driver I have to go on the top of it. So he dropped me at that and said, oh my god, I have to climb the Everest now. <laughs> <laughs> so for distrital, I should remove the shortness of breath because you have it every day. <laughs> so anyway, irregular heartbeat, muscle pain, tension, headache, and frequent upset and stomach and diarrhea. You know why happened? All these mental disorders are related with your stomach. If you are good and if you are treating your body nicely, or you are contributing to the economy of America by going to McDonald's. <laughs> you know, if you go to McDonald's, whom you help, you don't help Colombians. You help America. Mm -hmm. So whenever you go to McDonald's and eat french fries, you remember my name because you are contributing <laughs> towards my salary. <laughs> so anyway, so this is the key. If you can maintain this, you are successful. So you make sure that you take care of your body, take care of right habits, 
right food habits, right exercise habits, right mindset, right thinking, right positive thinking is a very important thing in life. And that is where all these symptoms can be easily avoided. So how do you know if you have anxiety disorder? So are you experiencing anxious or worrisome thought on a daily basis? Now you know the people sometimes they just get anxious. Oh, I'm getting in broken traffic. I'm getting in broken traffic, and they start having uh, stomach problems. They just get acidity. I don't know how many of you suffered from acidity. Any of the students have suffered from acidity, high acidity, like Sukras because the stress. I think it's Sukras is acid from Akash. Okay, don't tell yes or no. Don't tell you I think. <laughs> <laughs> So, are you plagued by fears, other perceived and unfounded or irrational? I came here and people told me. So I said, you know, death is certain, correct? And I always make a joke. Oh, you want to come and sit or you? you have, oh, go ahead, man. I love somebody who comes on the first bench because normally they are all like that. <laughs> 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 so, you know, there was a, so first day, I did not go out of the hotel. I said, you know, then second day, how long we stay in the hotel? So I started walking. So I found out, I said, man. So third day, I walked six kilometers. No problem, nobody even bothered me. And then gradually, I bought that card of Millennium. I didn't tell you. <laughs> because he had anxiety and stress. <laughs> but I entered. And yesterday I was in the Simon, the Bollywood ah, Plaza, yeah. and I loved it. It's so beautiful. <laughs> and you know, they say normally that if there is a bullet, and if your name is written on the bullet, it will come in search of it. You don't have to worry about it. So you don't worry. And that's how uh, you can control your anxiety uh, you have to avoid everyday social activities because they cause you anxiety. Do you experience sudden heart pounding, panic attack, or is your anxiety interfering with your schoolwork, social life, and family? And that is where the challenges come into the picture. So, college is a stressful time. Students can expect, deal with variety of expected and unexpected stresses through their college career. And this is what happens because every time you have a new topic, and every time new professor comes in the class, you don't even act, understand the accent. Here it is easy, but in America, we have different people. In my college, we had, I am part of the recruitment for the faculty. So we have over 22 countries in our faculty group. So there are Vietnamese, there are Chinese, there are Indian, there are all different types of Egyptian. And I feel pity for the students. Because all these 22 countries, they come with 22 different accents of English. Yeah. <laughs> poor American students, they have to learn our <laughs> accent because what they have no <laughs> Anyway, so, uh, so college is a stressful time and students can expect uh, to deal with a variety of expected and unexpected stresses. It, it happens very well. You know, sometimes some faculties are very interested in creating stress in the minds of the students. I love them. <laughs> so I had, a, I had a faculty, and this faculty, uh, she had some unfortunate thing happen in her life. So at the late age, her 18-year-old son died, so we were very considerate. Then she completed her PhD, she got into this, and then she thought that I have so little time that I should dump the whole biochemistry on the students. And she will go into the classroom with 150 to 200 slides. Oh. And as soon as she comes into the class, students will be shivering because now I don't know what to do with this. And she was also very stressed because she has to complete those 200 slides in two hours. Very big stress for the faculty. So it so happened, it's a very interesting story, that 70% of the students in the evaluation wrote that this faculty should be fired. In America, it is very easy. They, you know, hiring and hiring is very easy. Mm -hmm. So my dean called me and said that, Yash, it's time to get rid of the faculty. <laughs> so I said, look, as a faculty, I have a lot of experience as a faculty. I said, 
one student in the class can change the evaluation of all the students. They can easily inspire the faculty to write bad about the faculty. So I argued with my dean and I said, three years continuously, if all the students say that 70% fire her, I will do that, not now. Then I personally got involved. I asked the lady. So she said, you know, I want them to be more knowledgeable, do much things, and this, that, and all those things. And I told her, look, they are pharmacists. They don't need that much biochemistry. You are creating stress for them. So can I help you? And she said, okay, please. So I said, you reduce your flight from 200 to only 30. <laughs> so she said, okay. And then we had a good agreement. I enjoyed working with her. Believe it or not, next year, student grew different batch. They said they gave her the best teacher of the year. <laughs> so if I am stressed as a faculty, I will create stress into the minds of the students. And this is where we have to be very cautious as faculty that we don't transfer our stress to student stress. So your professional life, your faculty life, your family life, your social life are four different things. They never intermingle. If they intermingle, there is a problem. And you are dealing with 100 students, not one or two. I don't know what class numbers we have, but we have 100 students. So I can spoil the mindset of 100 students, or I can build the mindset of 100 students. This is where this anxiety can be created or can be easily dealt with it. So I appear to leave constant fear of failure academically, socially, are uncomfortable and extremely anxious in social atmospheres, and have trouble concentrating or seem to have a blank mind, seem plagued with guilt or stress, and have visible panic attacks. So these are some of the anxiety disorders. So anxiety happens when you think you have to figure out everything all at once. And breath, you are strong, you got this, take it day by day. And this is where the mindfulness meditation comes into the picture. Now in United States, most of the hospitals have a separate center for mindfulness meditation. Because they are telling, you know, suppose I am suffering from cancer, then I think, oh my God, I have only one month remaining, and I have to change the world in one month. Now that creates anxiety, that creates stress. But if I say that, okay, I have one month, I will enjoy every day. Now that, there is a paradigm shift in thinking. And this is where we need to learn to think differently. We have to change our thinking that I am not going to solve the world's problem. You know, there were many big people. Nelson Mandela came, problems are still there. Mahatma Gandhi came, problems are still there. Yesterday I was seeing the president of Boto, correct? Mm -hmm. Boto? President of Colombian? Petro. 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 Oh, Petro. Mm -hmm. Because there is a museum for him. Yesterday I was walking. Ah, Botero. Botero. Botero, Botero, sorry, sorry. He came in there. Mm -hmm. Colombia is still same, correct? Hasn't changed much. Or any president or any big thing. It doesn't change. I am not going to change the world. It's only me. I can change myself. And if I change myself, I am good. And that is where everybody thinks the world will automatically change. And anxiety creates this problem. So we need to understand that we take it by day by day. Today it is very tough. Tomorrow I, I, uh, I have done my master's in conflict management. And I do a lot of conflict management in college. I have a beautiful workshop. I talk about how to deal with conflicts in institution of higher education. Because there is a, always conflict. I was talking to some of the faculty here in university. He's not here, but the other university. So if I say here, then I will be in trouble. He will be angry. <laughs> but in other universities, they said, wow, that is needed. We need that. You know? <laughs> and I was talking to them anyway. So these are some of the challenges. So we need to understand that it is in our hands to deal with mental disorder. We can sort it out very easily. And so global suicide scenario, this is another very challenging thing happening, is that there are very like, you know, uh, you know this guy? Yeah, very famous. He had a following. One was following his food product, you know and one fine morning he disappeared. Many people who were addicted to his program had anxiety, suicidal things. And there are some such people where uh, this is a very dangerous scenario. In many countries, in South Africa, in Malaysia, in, in India also to some extent, they, in China, they have this 
habit of looking for role model and the role model disappear, you think that I am not worth doing. Mm -hmm. And they kill themselves. And it has happened many a time. And high profile suicides impact the young people because they think them as role models. And the highest teenage suicide rates were observed in Canada, Estonia, Latvia, Iceland, and New Zealand with 10 or more suicides per 100,000 teenagers. You can imagine how it changes the country wise, and the numbers are very different. Next. So, this is another thing which I picked it up from crime victimization and suicide ideation among Colombian college students, the role of depressing symptoms, feminism, and social support. Beautiful article, actually. And it covers various discussions, you know, depressive symptoms, crime victimization, both depressive symptoms and suicide ideation, depressive symptoms, social support, social support, crime victimization. So, this is a cycle, and this all leads to the uh, suicidal effect in the teenagers. Uh, so in South Africa, they have seen that in 1950, the suicide rate for white males was 15 to 24, and it has tripled subsequently. Uh, white females between 15 to 24 have more than doubled in the last 15 years. Suicide rate of black males has risen by two by third, and further more studies suggest that 20% of college students have suicidal thoughts at some point in their college career. And this is where we need to prevent that. Because suicide is now next stage, depression, anxiety, and then comes the suicide. And you can get the symptoms of this. The administration of the college, the university, the students, the faculty, all of them are responsible. If somebody commits a suicide in the college, it is not only his mistake. It is a mistake. It, it takes all different types of people to build up a village. And it, it takes a village to make everybody healthy. And that is where we need to Consider, so suicide is the act of deliberately taking one's own life. Feelings of guilt, guilt, hopelessness, despair can build when students don't take steps to cope with pressure. Suicide affects everyone, including the victim, friend, and family. So this is where everybody is responsible if something like this happens. This is the extreme level of the thing happening. Now, they, this is data from the same paper for Colombia. They have said that if there is a depressive symptom, and there is a loneliness, if there is a high family support, the suicide are less. If there is a low family support, suicides were higher. So if there is a broken family, then only single parent is there, the chances that suicide are higher. And uh, it is a very interesting data that uh, we need to create a family. You know, I am coming from Miraflores or some remote area, Santa Marta, north of this. But I will create my own family here with my friends, with my teachers, with my, you know. It's not so simple. And it is you who can make that. It is very easy to build up your own group and friendship. You know, I am in a hotel now. And almost today I was talking that I am going to go to Saturday. So all the people who were waiting, serving in the kitchen, they all came. The kitchen thing, oh, you are leaving. I said, don't worry, I will come back next year. <laughs> I will stay in this hotel only. Okay. You know, so you made a family. You made family, they take care of you, you know. It's, this is how you build up your own family everywhere you go. I have traveled in 100 countries, and I love to build up my own family in every country. So I don't have to pay for hotel also, that's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Next slide. So prepare teachers to talk about suicide. You know, there is a need for workshops for the faculty that they should be trained to identify these mental problems in their students. In America, we do that. Now that after COVID has become a big thing, because we are now having programs for the faculty and programs for the students. And to understand the uh, symptoms of mental disorders within the students. They are disorders, they are not disorders. So we can prevent them. But faculty, if I am totally, I will teach and I will go away. That is not faculty. I teach and I make sure that they are healthy. I teach and I make sure they get the knowledge. I teach and I make sure that they have no mental problem. That is faculty. And that is where we need to uh, educate the faculty to identify such problems. It is very important because you can change it. You are dealing with them day in, day out. Uh, you can change that. And that is where, uh, nowadays people say, oh, it is the responsibility of the parents. No, parents are in the village in the hut. Mm -hmm. How you will make them responsible if they are studying in this Vital University? No, that's not possible. So they, they poor, people put money to put the students into the college. So they are doing their job. We need to do our job as a faculty, and that's what I always tell my faculty also. So 
So we need to prepare teachers to talk about suicide, to talk about all these things. So there can be one hour in a month or alternate month to have a get together of the faculty and just discuss it. Hey, did you observe some of these things in your students? And then now it starts triggering their mind, triggering their brain to think about, oh my God, I am responsible for this. And this is where even from top administration to the, even the faculty have problems. You know, many of the faculty have mental problems. And that's where you have to create a village where everybody takes care of everybody. And that will be considered with suicide case. Go ahead. For suicide, three things to watch is speech. Suicidal people may talk about feeling trapped, feeling as if they are a burden, and there is a reason to go and may discuss suicide. You know, you must have heard about the Virginia Tech killing. In America, there was a boy, he was a Korean boy, and I went with, one of my students was there at that time, the shooting happened. And 32 boys and girls were killed. He just came with AK-47, killed all of them, and killed himself. Then people started thinking that, what was the change in this boy? Why? He's a Korean boy, very docile, never, and the person with whom I work, Professor Lee, the Lee, Professor Lee and this boy used to go to church every week. They used to observe him, but they could not observe the changes happening in him. And that's where the things happened. And then my student who was there right at the spot, for three years she suffered so badly that she came back, left her PhD and came back and then coincidentally I met her in one of the engagement parties and then we became friends. I told her if you want to change, you can come to my office. It took her three months to make a decision to come to my office. And one fine morning she walked in my office and said, I want to do my complete my PhD. I said, three months? It took so I realized that that is not the, it is not her, but it is the mind. And then she worked so hard and she wanted to get it. And the most happiness I saw in my life was that when she defended her PhD and the committee approved it, she came out and then she danced on the road saying that I can do anything in my life. Look at this, a person who was witnessing the mass shooting, had se severe depression on steroids for three years, came, encouraged, and finally she got married now. She's working for US patent office. Change, so who is responsible? Faculty. You know, you cannot say that I'm not responsible for, you cannot raise your hands. Oh, I'm not paid enough. But you opted to be faculty. When you took the job as faculty, these are all part of your job description. It is not written. But you have to accept it. And that's where so mood is another thing which changes, behavior is another thing which changes. So always being in a hurry does not does not prevent death. Neither does going slowly prevent living. You know, both ways is there. And this is where we have to understand the living and death and how they are. Please go ahead, next slide. So why should we uh, what should you do if you start noticing a suicidal behavior? So one thing is confront with them directly, hey, I think if something is wrong with you and you take it head on, that is possible. You can confront with them, ask them directly, make a safety a priority, be there for them. They should feel I have somebody with whom I can talk. You know, in these levels, they don't, they have no friends, nothing. So this is, and give them the tools to help themselves and remain in contact continuously. And this is, you know, nowadays, if you see all the mosque shootings, you know, this year, we had more than 470 mass shootings. Mass shooting means minimum four people are killed. And good number of shootings have happened in schools, in religious places, and in colleges. And the reason is they don't know what to do in life. They keep on writing on Facebook. Nowadays, American police watches the Facebook because they can see the signs that this guy may go and shoot people. It is very interesting. Social media, because they have no friends. You know, what is happening is with the technology advances, I also watch even the children with iPhone, they don't talk to other. They have no communication skills. And this is going to be a big problem for the society because if they have problem, they have nobody to talk. You cannot write on WhatsApp that I'm planning to kill some of the faculties at the college. <laughs> and that has happened in America. And they killed faculty. So these are some of the things which we can take care of with. Uh, at a country level also, we need to address this business thing. So eating disorders is another funny thing. 
but it's very interesting. Millions of college students, both women and men alike, they don't think it is all right leaving the college there. The vast majority don't seek help and don't realize the extent of their problem. Eating disorders are extreme behavior, emotions, attitudes, and resolve, evolve along food and weight perception. You know, you see the model walking on the rail, you know, mm -hmm. and then you say, oh, I should look like her. Mm -hmm. And then you stop eating food. And then you become anorexic. As you become anorexic, you start, your body becomes victim to the diseases. And that happens. Now, I cannot, I cannot control my eating, so I become fat and fat. I say, I don't want to be the role model. I am what I am, and I leave. Mm -hmm. That's another eating disorder. So it goes on both the sides of the pendulum. And these disorders can cause serious mental and physical problems that can result in life-threatening issues. And this is where I'm trying to talk is that if you are eating disorders, if you do not eat properly, it will build up depression, anxiety, suicidal uh, attitude in due course of time because your microbes. Microbiota start changing. It affects your brain, it affects your serotonin and dopamine and that how it comes across. So you don't have to look like you have eating disorder to have one. And then eating disorder are extremely common. At least 30 million people in the United States suffer from, that is 10% of the population. 30 million people suffer from eating disorder. And mental disorders, individuals suffering from eating disorder have the highest mortality rate. One person dies as a result of eating disorder every 62 minutes in America. This is a very scary thing, but it is happening. And eating disorders happen because you do not take, you know, you watch the TV and say, ah, oh, this is what I want to. Or the children will say, I want this toy. And then they go after eating those and you find even small children become very obese. And that is where the eating disorder comes. There's a cultural view of eating disorder, however, they don't often seek treatment and bulimia and anorexia are seen as women's issues. So, so eating disorders are, uh, then I say to my body softly, I want to be your friend. <coughs> and it took a, the body took a long break and said, oh, I have been waiting all my life for this model. You know, when you say, I want to take care of my body, body says, oh, thank you very much. At least you realize <laughs> that you are responsible for your, your body. And this is beautiful. So distorted, poor body image, excessive exercise, irregular heartbeat, dehydration, feeling like eating is out of control, and fear eating is almost done, my time. So, no. yeah, I'll just finish it. Constantly and making excuses of eating habits. So these are common things. Uh, next slide. So do you know if you are eating disorders, you can ask all the, I'm going to share this with you all if you want. Professor Caesar has a copy of it. So you can ask these questions whether you have, nothing tastes as good as healthy tips. And this is where the thing comes. And be, you have to be very cautious with whether you are victim of the eating disorder or not. And Just start like so. You have no. at least 15 minutes. Okay, no problem. So, <laughs> so let's go further. Uh, I'll So questions, okay. <laughs> Karma. So what you can do is, if your friends skipping meals or only eating small portions, these are some of the symptoms. You can find out how your friend is. You know, you can see the people growing in weight in classroom. It happens. You can observe the people. You find that some students start putting up weight for no reason. In spite of students at distrital going up and down, still they acquire weight with the exercises. That means something is wrong. And this is where, because some people have a habit, if you see the food, they can't protect, they prevent. They just eat it, mm -hmm. eat it, eat it, you know. It's very common and that's how they put on uh, weight there. So you have to think about it. So another last thing is addiction. This is another bad thing which is on campuses, very bad. And you know, it's the uh, alcohol drug use is common in students. Addiction is defined by dependency and repeated abuse of the substance, such as drugs or alcohol. And it is very, uh, you never know when it starts. And you are the one who can control, you are the one who can be victim of it. But it is, you need tough mind to prevent this happening. And 25% of our students who regularly drink report academic problem tied to their drinking habit. 60% college students have consumed alcohol in the past month and two out of three of the students engaged in binge, binge drinking during the same period. They had some drugs also, it was alcohol, very common on the campus. And so 20% of college students meet alcohol use disorder criteria. And national survey has shown that 21.3% of young adults use illicit drugs on the campus. 
which is very common there. And 3.8% admitted to using psychotherapeutic drugs for non-medical purposes. So addiction is quite common. And you will know how the addiction or alcohol dependence starts. You take one sip of alcohol, then two sips, then five sips, then whole water. <laughs> and that continues. And it is very difficult for the, to know where to stop. And that's where if you have a good company, you can control. If you have a bad company, you will be victim of this. And if you, do you think heavily you are disappointed, distressed, or get in a fight? And these are some of the things. Have you, any of your blood relatives had an addiction or drug to alcohol? Because the genes can tell you. This is another addiction is also related with genes. And they are trying to find it out what type of genes are responsible for that. Please, next slide. Thank you. Uh, addiction symptoms are there, slurred speech, bloodshot eyes, impaired coordination, clear anxiety, paranoia. They drink it, but they don't want to tell anybody that I'm drinking, but their body shows. And that's where the challenges come to sudden need of money for financial crisis, deep tolerance for alcohol, uh, and then sudden change in the friend group. They dump their regular good friends and take another group there. Uh, so, so you can see these things happening and you can easily tell them to keep learning about this. Next page. So what you can do is ask yourself the question, does your friend drink or relieve stress or suppress, suppress issues? Have they withdrawn from activities and schoolwork? Does your friend like to revolve around drug and alcohol use? Have they developed change in personality and have they noticed unusual smell on their dress, body, or clothing? And so let us go back to basics. We need to understand who we are, why I am here, what is my role in the life, do I have a mission in life? If you don't know this, then you can all be victim of this mental thing. Why we are here and what is my mission and goals of this life, we have to find it out. So wake up to our true identity, who we are, and then the kingdom of heaven is within you, and whosoever shall know himself shall find it. And this is where uh, we go back. Next slide, please. So nobody can teach me who I am. You can describe parts of me, but who I am and what I need something, I have to find it myself. It is my responsibility to be responsible. This is Chinu Achide, a very famous uh, African writer. How do you know to get know yourself? There are beautiful videos. Uh, they, a lot of people here see these videos. I showed it to some people and they say, oh, I know this guy. Go ahead, next. So take care of your food and the matter of your diet will take care of half of your problem. If you have good habits of food, you will not have this problem. If not, then you will be victim for that. So if you give bad food to your stomach, it will jump for you to dance. <laughs> if you eat bad food, then it will make you to dance with the drum. And that's where the challenge is coming. So healthy CNA function, abnormal CNA function, abnormal blood function, and healthy blood function. These are all dependent upon stress and this is healthy status. So most of the things which we have seen are because, because of your habits. Next slide, please. So be in a company of good friends and take care of your friend. A friend who calms is better than an enemy who smiles. That is the African proverb, very beautiful proverb. And togetherness, being together with the people, good people is uh, another key for the uh, success. Do not look for easy solutions. Pearls do not lie on the seashore. If you want one, you must dive for it. You must struggle to get over all these challenges. And stress out, step now and slow down. Big story. You know, I'll tell you a very nice story. I was in Brazil and I had a, we were having a dinner. So the guy who was sitting next to me was a CEO of IBM. So I casually asked him that how do you select people to work in your company? And he, without blinking his eye, he said that I look for T personality people. So I said, what is the T personality people? So this is L personality people. And this is T personality people. If you are good in education, and if you are a good piano player, you have a T personality. If you are good in education, and you are a good bike rider, you have a T personality, you can take stress. But if you are only good student, but no extracurricular activity, no involvement in any society, you will be susceptible to the mental problems. And that's why, Build up your T personality, and faculty should encourage people to have T personalities with different out of the box thinking. So when I ask that IBM person, what is the good thing you can express about T personality? Give me the example. He said, I am the example. I said, how? 
He said, I have a MD in pediatrics and PhD in computer sciences. So when there is a problem of pediatrics, I think from computer sciences. If there is a computer science problem, I think from pediatrics. And it works. So that is the T personality. It's very beautiful sentence. Last story. So we together, it helps in life challenges. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. That's another thing. Say no to loneliness and yes to togetherness. This is the solution for majority of the mental problems in life. So trust in yourself and trust in God. However long the night, the dawn will break. So even if today you have depression, don't worry about it. Take help and make sure tomorrow is dawn will come in life. And it is neither end of the beginning or beginning of the end. It is just temporary stage as a college student. Learn to maintain your mental health as a college student and help others to be part of this journey. That is the key for success, overcoming this mental health. So, go ahead, next slide. Uh, that's our university next. Uh, you know, I was told, my, my mentor was a very smart guy. He said that if you have five people in front of you, never be shy <laughs> and bragging about you. <laughs> so these are some of my beautiful books in nanotechnology. I work in nano medicine area for emerging technologies of nanotechnology. All these are uh, nanotechnology bio interactions. And then next slide. Uh, I work on drug delivery systems for antibody medicated addiction. These are my new book, Dream Death Delivery System. It is Handbook of Lung Targeted Death, Handbook of Space. I love this book because I got, it's a 1100 pages book. We worked on the impact of microgravity and supergravity on drug delivery systems and finally published a beautiful book and it got the international award from International Academy of Aeronautics. So I'm very happy about this book. Uh, next is, I work in the nutraceutical herbal drugs which are very good for Mental health, excellent. You go and take chamomile tea, you'll, your depression will come down. There are so many good hibiscus tea. You know, you have hibiscus everywhere on the road. Just pick up one flower, put it in the tea and drink it. It will reduce your stress. And it is very interesting. So these are all Muchas gracias. <laughs> if you see the President Joko Vidodo of Indonesia, he wears this. Yeah, he loves this. And he is on WhatsApp. <laughs> okay, so ahora vamos para las preguntas. Ladies and gentlemen, no sé si es que confiaron en las preguntas en inglés, que va a ser en español, ya que yo no soy Juan Carlos, pero no soy Juan Wilmar. Y el profesor Chenta. Y el profesor Juan Carlos, por allá, por eso no Wilmar. And I will have a freedom to, if you ask me a question in Spanish, I will answer in Spanish. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, Thank you so much for the conference. Uh, my question is about impact. So, can I ask you, can I think that they help you to harm everyone in not enough? And they might be under the some point suicide is a respectable choice for somebody who has not find, found the solution uh, even following yeah. these recommendations. So suicide is, could be considered as a respectable choice? I think no. <laughs> <laughs> because the reason is suicide is running away from the challenges. If you have challenges, take it head on. Fight with the challenges and say, I will beat you. Suicide is not solution. Suicide is running away from the challenges. And that is not a good strategy in life. But 
God forbid, if you are destined to die committing suicide, nobody can change you. Because that is the certain thing which is written by the God. In African tradition, they say, you tread the path which has been already designed by the God. So those are exceptional cases because suicide cases are very few. So we need to make sure that that person should be given an option. And second thing I really want to share with you is that uh, there was a great saint in India, his name was Swami Dayanand Saraswati. I heard his talk in 1989 in Ann Arbor, Michigan, when I was very young. So one sentence always kept in mind in my mind is that you cannot change a person. You cannot change a person but you can create an environment conducive for change. And this is where the responsibility comes into the picture, especially with college students, that we need to create an environment in the university or in the colleges or in departments which are conducive for change. And that's where the success lies. So suicide is not a solution. Suicide is running away from the scenario. And we need to trigger his mind to say, hey, come on, buddy, let's beat it. And we can beat it together. And that's where the environment can help. Am I answering your question or not? and tell him how to teach physics. He made you to laugh. I don't know, you were not there in the first lecture. I saw you coming late. And you missed the opportunity to know how a good teacher can be. That's Professor Jivan Kalo. So please invite him. You know, any topic I love because my students, good number of students write my evaluation that I make nanotechnology numerous. <laughs> So every teacher has to read a lot of jokes. Mm -hmm. Every teacher has to read a lot of funny things in life and collect funny videos. So when you come into the class and you want to teach something which is physics, very hard. <laughs> you know, I would have failed in physics <laughs> if you had not taken physics. But if you can make the thing interesting, and I have heard that uh, one of the professors standing here has made a very good way of teaching to the master student by giving them work and then asking them to create questions and then answering their own questions. Mm -hmm. Because you create your own questions and you answer, that means you are learning. So learning, teaching is one thing, learning is one thing, acquiring knowledge is one thing, and acquiring wisdom is another, another thing. These are different steps of learning process. So teaching is one thing. I teach one after the other, one flight, second flight, third flight, fourth flight. I finish it. I go home and sleep. That's teaching. But we are helping the people to learn. That means I spend time after teaching to talk to the students and talk, hey, did you understand this? Then somebody will say, oh, I didn't understand this concept. Spend time to explain the concept. And that's where the learning process starts and acquiring knowledge happens. And over the period of time, when you go in practical world, you become wise. It takes time. Am I making sense? Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Can you write me a certificate letter? <laughs> I'm just joking. Being the rector, his certificate will be very important to get Colombian citizenship. <laughs> I don't know if they need to 
very nice thing. I, I have seen in many <coughs> colleagues. That is quite a very simple thing, what we say. In the college, in the university, if the rector doesn't come, doesn't matter. It is running smoothly, am I right? Yeah. It goes on. If the dean doesn't come, he will go down. If the janitor doesn't come to clean yeah. the toilets, then everybody starts complaining. Yeah. Nobody complains about rector is not coming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> not the dean. But so who is important? And once you start respecting everybody who works, then automatically the atmosphere starts changing. If suppose the rector of the university walks in and sees the janitor, shakes hand with him and says, hey, hello, how are you? How is your work? Is it enjoying or is it not? Now 10 people around are watching him to respect him as a human being, him or her. And that's where we feel respected. So it always goes from top to bottom or bottom to top. But everybody has to learn to respect each other. Once you start respecting each other, then you create an environment where at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock you feel like coming. I want to go because this is my workplace. I enjoy going there. There has to be some programs organized for faculty, organized for students, organized for... So I saw, I was in Los Angeles University and I really appreciate they had beautiful lab facilities and had very good interaction with the faculty and very brilliant faculty. So, uh, and they have a Friday, they have a nice um, de stage decoration yeah. in front yeah. of that La Marcena, the big yeah. building. And Friday I was there sitting on the stage because the taxi did not come. <laughs> and the students were loving, oh my God, they were enjoying the atmosphere, it was so vibrant. These type of vibrant atmospheres need to be created. And I understand that uh, the workload is high here. You know, they, there are challenges for faculty. I, I could see the challenges. But if you go to Indonesia, you are better off, I'm telling you. They have more workload. So <laughs> always look who have more challenges than looking who has less challenges. So I was talking to faculty, we were in Los Angeles and we were discussing salaries in there. I said, if you want to be happy, don't compare the salaries. Yeah. Never go to US. I am in United States. I work. 14 years in USA. I have never gone to, it is a public document. I have never seen my own salary on that public. I don't want ulcers. Why should I get ulcer? Because he is getting more salary than me. <laughs> no, it's not worth. And this is where you have to create that environment. If that environment is created and it takes only two, three people. You know, you'll find that every faculty group has two or three people who reduces the stress by saying, telling some joke, making some fun. Every faculty group is like that. We need to have more of them, that's all. And half of the problems are resolved. I think I am not having full solution for that because I know I live with 152 faculties. <laughs> <laughs> and conflict resolution is like per type. Professor Ravika. in the college education, my, my perception is different. I say that undergrad education should be <coughs> created in such a way that people understand where to go and get the information. They need not have the information, all of it, but they should know that there are resources, how to find those resources to get the information. By the time you come to the postgraduate degree, masters, you will be able to understand how to interpret those resources. And by the time you are in PhD, 
you should be able to adopt those, apply those resources. So if you put what you are doing in PAD at undergrad level, you create space. The way I explained my faculty, that she wanted to turn full biochemistry in that one semester, which is impossible. So we need to create the curriculum and revisit the curriculum more and often. Every five years, at least change the curriculum, if something is obsolete, get rid of it, because it is not going to be impactful. So that way, the stress will reduce, first thing. Second thing is, we need to accept that students will have problems. Accepting the problem is first step of finding out the solution for them. And if you don't accept the problem, oh, our students are God-given, they are the best in the world. So you will never be able to help them. So we need to identify, we need to have some simple flyers <coughs> on the blackboard. Oh, do you think you are suffering from anxiety disorder? One flyer sitting there. Now it triggers thinking in the minds of students. Am I or I am not? Eating disorder. Just put a flyer and then have get together once in a two months talking about these things. And people will come. Those who have will not believe, but those who have problems, they cannot say that I have a problem, but they will come and attend it. That is an opportunity given to the students or to the faculty to try to find out where the things are wrong. Because it is, once you know where the things are wrong, and if there is a, we have many, uh, especially after COVID, we have ma many programs. One program is called Bringing the Therapeutic Dogs. Here everybody has dogs. But in our library every Thursday, there will be 25, 30 therapeutic dogs who are trained. And the children, students who have mental problems, they will come, and they don't say that I have mental problems, but they love to play with the dog. That reduces their stress. There are many counselors who are trained to understand these mental problems. And if I see as a faculty, there is a problem, then I am not, not going to confront with the student. What I do is I send a message to the student affairs dean and tell the dean that uh, I, in my class I am thinking that this person has a problem. Then the student affairs dean will invite one to one discussion will be happening and the student agrees that yeah I will go to mental counseling. Then they send me. So there is a procedure. We have to create certain protocols. We have to create certain guidelines. Because as soon as you create guidelines, that means one thing is clear that you are accepting there are problems. Second thing is you are trying to resolve them. And third thing is that you are seeking for solutions. So these are the stages of accepting it. Accept first is acceptance. Once you accept it, it is then create some guidelines, try to have workshops, then interact with the student. There has to be some way. You know, I I'll tell you last thing and then I'll stop. <laughs> I talk to my faculty, new faculty, when they are hired, I tell them last minute, oh, you have to talk with them after me? Uh, uh, then no, I should. No, 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 finish, we finish. Okay, last, last, only last. <laughs> ah. So, there's no blackboard, right? Uh, it's okay, because I'm a hardcore teacher, I like writing on blackboard. <laughs> but anyway, what I say my faculty is that if you have a problem, the faculty, then he can go to the chair, correct? Next, boss. If there is no problem, a uh, problem with the chair, he can come to my office, I'll try to resolve. If not, he can go to dean. If not, he can go to president of the university. If not, he can go to Ron DeSantis, governor of Florida. If not, he can go to Joe Biden, president of the <laughs> state. It's a democracy. But then, Joe Biden takes care of 350 million people. So you are one in 350 million people. How much time he has? Ron DeSantis takes care of 22 million people. No time. Our president takes care of 85,000 people on campus. No time. Our dean takes care of 450 people. No time. Our myself, I take 150 people less time. Then who has time? Chair. So if you have good friendship with your chair, you don't have to go to Joe Biden. <laughs> Very simple. So. Making loving, good, cordial relationship with everybody, including your chair, is the solution for success in academia. If you cannot have good relation with your chair, then in promotion and tenure it reflects. Why? Have good friends. You know, go for a 
cup of coffee? Who is that? John. What the best coffee yesterday uh, I had? Pambadez. Pambadez. Yeah, I cannot, you know, all Spanish people are very interesting. <laughs> they all turn around all the pronunciations of the English words. <laughs> Gracias, muchas gracias. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.